people think about workplace safety from the perspective of uh, like a police officer or a firefighter or an EMS, basically putting themselves in their boots, then hopefully they will make changes in their lives or in their businesses or as their, uh, their driving habits that will help ensure that those people get home safely. Your job environment or your warehouse or your workplace is very, very familiar to you to the point where you don't see anything anymore. You don't see hazards, you don't, uh, or you're aware of a hazard so much that it's become part of something you know that you have to avoid. Step over this, push that that way, you know, lift this out of the way first. We don't know that. When we come into a building, our expectation is that as by the code and our inspections uh, provide, is everything safely stored, stocked away, clean and responsibly kept. The employers and the workers have to understand that safety rules and regulations are in place to make the worksite safe for everybody. The ramifications, because they don't follow those safety rules and regulations, could be you know, illness, injury, accident, or loss of life. We're also trying to shatter those myths that when a police officer or a firefighter or a medic or someone, a paramedic, dies in the line of duty, oh, that's too bad, that's part of the risk they sign on for the job. What we're trying to say is, yeah, there's a lot of risks, but there's a lot of ways that communities can minimize those risks. So that's, the edu that's part of the educational message that we're trying to get out there, is that a lot of these um, fatalities and injuries and near misses, they are preventable. Around 5, 5.30 in the morning of September 29th, John responded to a warehouse and um, he'd, uh, he'd gone, he was working with uh, Constable Lil Hall that evening, that was his partner. Um, I was working with um, uh, John Petropoulos the, the night of the accident. Um, we attended a, a ten, uh, an alarm call basically. I was a regular patrol officer at the time and I ran to the back to contain a uh, man door. Um, other officers uh, met me back there and uh, John Petropoulos uh, waited to meet the uh, canine officer who uh, he attended with inside the building to clear it. I remember entering the, the premise and uh, starting the search uh, uh, methodically with John at my side letting uh, my police service dog Gino uh, lead us through the building. Uh, we needed to send somebody up to uh, a second level mezzanine to ensure that nobody had accessed or had taken refuge. We more or less changed roles. I was there to protect him. Uh, as he ascended a, a small ladder. And I remember him uh, advancing towards um, uh, an area that got a little bit darker. And um, much to my disbelief, as I saw John advance along the wall, I saw him disappear. We heard the canine officer get on the air and uh, state that uh, someone had fallen. We uh, then managed to get inside the building and it was uh, dark in there, which was, um, we're still trying to make radio contact. We're trying to figure out where they are in the building. Uh, when we got on scene, uh, we observed uh, the, the accident. It didn't dawn on me right at that moment in time that he had actually slipped through um, a false ceiling. Uh, he was in a coffee room. Uh, he was laying on his back. Uh, he didn't appear to be breathing. Um, his eyes appeared to be open and he wasn't moving. Uh, it was my point to go and find lighting, uh, which was difficult. I had to make a few laps around the building trying to find the lights. Uh, we got the lights on and uh, members were performing CPR on, on my partner at that time. As I conducted an, ex an inspection, I realized that John had a huge gaping hole in the back of his head, which had obviously hit the hard marble floor that uh, existed in a coffee room. I bundled up my shirt. Um, I used it as a, a compress and a, a place for uh, at least to stop whatever bleeding was occurring at the time. And I remember the gravity, the gravity of this hit me at the scene when uh, the emergency medical services personnel arrived on the scene uh, and looked right at me and said, you better call your chief. It was a hard, hard, hard uh, night. It was the hardest uh, night I've ever had as a police officer. Um, It ended up there was no one in the building, there was no intruder in there, so John died protecting a premise that did not need protecting. John's death very could have easily been prevented. If a safety railing had been in place as per the law, then John would still be here today. The employer is required by legislation across, I would say, North America to, to assess the worksite hazards. Good housekeeping is definitely an important part of the overall process. If a business fails to let their, keep their extinguishers uh, active or they store debris or there's trip hazards available for people to uh, fall victim to, then of course you have to accept liability for that. 
look and see if guardrails are missing or the shelving isn't properly secured. Compressed gas cylinders are ready to fall over. Stock that's stored too high, shelving units that are, are put too close together, doors where uh, material goes down for a minute, ends up staying there for a week. A big uh, fear for us is uh, darkness and the unknown. A lot of the times tools are left, um, sharp objects are left on the floors. Those are very dangerous for us. What may fail, you know, what could fall, and from that perspective that gives them an idea of that if it could happen, it will happen. And it's extremely important that we, we know best we can what we're dealing with. Uh, the firefighters are running on a, an amount of air that is limited, but if we can get through the building quickly, it's going to make our job a lot easier and a lot safer. We don't want to be the ones that discover the dangers in your workplace, right? That should be already taken care of before we have to attend. Look around your workplace. Look at it from the perspective of them, whether it's a police officer who may be investigating a break and enter, whether it's a firefighter who could be in a fire, or um, in the case of our traffic safety as well. If you see an ambulance coming up behind you or any emergency services vehicle, get out of the way. Our workplace is everywhere. As soon as we're arriving at a scene, we're planning to leave and go to a hospital. Of course, we're going to end up in the back of the ambulance sooner or later. And until we get to the hospital, that's it. That's where we are, and that's our workspace. It is the law to yield right of way to any emergency vehicle when you're sounding our lights and siren, and that's, that's the fundamental message. And we do everything we can to be seen and heard, but we can't defeat some things. We can't defeat a person who's on a cell phone. We can't defeat a person who's distracted in a vehicle who's not paying attention. You need to do what is safe when you can to allow right of way to an emergency vehicle. Well, if our job as uh, law enforcement officers is to protect, uh, protect them and protect their interests, uh, the reality is, is they should take efforts to protect us while we're protecting them. We have every intention to probably clean up after ourselves or, or make something safe, but as our day goes on, we're distracted, we're pulled in another direction, and things get away from us. People can be naive to the dangers that their businesses or even their own homes uh, present to emergency services workers. You know, let a, let a child walk through the building and you wanted to prevent something from happening. That's kind of the level when we're dealing with uh, things in the dark. We need lighting, we need railings, we need proper workplace safety to be in effect. I, I think often they, they feel that they're not going to be a victim. I believe employers and, and employees become complacent. Quite often I've heard, well, I've been doing it 20 years this way. Why should I change? Uh, all it takes is one. Well, I think the message that's consistent is uh, play by the rules. Uh, make sure that if you're running a business that you do it as safely as you possibly can for the public and for your employees and then of course for the services that may have to respond. Uh, it's about uh, constant assessment, uh, constant assessment of the, uh, the environment that you're working in. If we're lifting a patient, moving a patient care, doing anything like that, we have hands on a patient. If they're injured under our care, we've, we've done them no service. What we're doing with the Memorial Fund and all the work that we're doing is for the living and we're trying to create safer workplaces um, you know, whether it's buildings or, or roads or whatever, for um, people who are out there um, every day, you know, doing their emergency uh, services work. We need to work together to ensure that this happens. We're all on the same side. It's a heck of a lot easier to take a quick look around your workplace, make those changes uh, to make it safer for everyone than it is to have the death of a police officer on your hands or, in my case, to have to live with um, losing my husband and my soulmate for the rest of my life.